you saw me all wrapped up, silver foil, shivering, so grey. And um, yeah. after an hour, I thought, well, I've got to try to do something to get going. So I had a little bit of food, tiny bit, over about 10 minutes, and it stayed down. So I went outside to give it a go. Um, and I was going to go to decide, so do 400 metres, and then do decide rather than wait at the, um, at the checkpoint to decide. And that's what I did. Got out 400 metres and felt so ten times better and uh, carried on and here I am which is um, quite surprising <laughs> At Lake London it's a 100 miles running race. Uh, it starts at Coniston in Cumbria and it completes a clockwise loop of the Lake District and they finish back at Cumbria, uh, back at Coniston in Cumbria. And they've got um, 40 hours to complete the 100 mile course. And there's a lot of climbing as well, over 23,000 feet of climbing on the course. So it's certainly not flat. It's kind of slippy as well, isn't it? Especially when it's wet. It's a bit slippy <laughs> when wet, <laughs> yeah. It's about ultra racing, it's about endurance, it's about sweat and the grit and we wanted some sort of arena for that. From my perspective I just had friends who liked running 100 mile running races um, but they, uh, they didn't want to pay to go abroad and there wasn't any over here that they particularly wanted to do so they said well could you put one on in the Lake District and at the time I kind of reluctantly agreed I would put it on for a small number of people and then um, not expecting it to grow into what it has today. We wanted a, a, a really good British race, you know, there's some fantastic races in Europe and the US. We wanted a, a race of that calibre in the UK, you know, something to be proud of and that's what we're trying to build as well. Uh, I'm really a cyclist, I've done lots of cycling and not much running, so this could be a big step into the unknown for me. I think we're both probably prepared, yeah. can't do much more. Uh, I'm going to hope there's a fetal position <laughs> and sucking my thumb and <laughs> sobbing quietly to myself in the corner might just get me going again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think they've all probably got a slight element of craziness about them, but um, in the 100 mile event, I mean, most of them are, you know, they're pretty hardened 100 mile uh, competitors. I mean, we always get some people that kind of slip through the net that maybe they're not quite as experienced and they, you know, often suffer. And we do have, a, on average, about a 60% dropout rate, 24% of the people actually complete. It's not just about the distance, it's about the terrain as well. And I think if it was just about the distance, it's probably quite a few more people could do it. As long as you get back here, I'm not going to be disappointed <laughs> with anything. Yeah, if I can keep with Chris for, for a few miles at least, I'll be happy, but I'm thinking maybe... I'm going to sprint the, the first kilometre. <laughs> yeah, you know that right drop now. me, just break me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that there's always going to be someone worse off than me, and that's, that's my attitude, and uh, as long as I can keep going, I'll get to the, the end eventually. I've got a big can of Relentless in my drop bag, so when I start feeling tired, I'm just going to smash that and hopefully <laughs> keep going, yeah. That's the scary bit, is just being awake. And the second night, one. hitting the night time again, that's going to be a Psychologically, it's going to be quite tough.
from the Lake District, so I live now in Ullswater, uh, but sort of generally we've grown up around here. We come here to look after people, feed them, make sure that they're going on the way perfectly. If they're not feeling too good, then we look after them again, put them inside and try and encourage them to go on if we can do, but if they really want to retire, then we'll take them out and they can retire and, and get picked up. And so we're here basically to look after people. <laughs> My name is Brian Layton, um, I'm 61 year old, I'm doing the best I can, pretty knackered, but uh, um, I'm feeling it in my legs a little bit, which is not surprising because I did a 102 mile race last week, so, um, but we're going to try and get round. Brilliant event, really is a brilliant event. Yeah, you can feel it, but you can just have to run through it, don't you? And when you stop, sort it out. <laughs> I've got blister plaster on, I've already put that on, but it is kind of worn its way off because it's a bit wet out there. <laughs> the wet rocks through the night is tough. Yeah, it's a bit it's slippy. Yeah. It's over there, Dibber's over Dibber's there. Dibber's up there, sorry. He, he went down out his uh, shoulder, and he's alright now, though. I'll see how it's recovered. Tough as old boots. Yeah. As old as old boots. <laughs> The uh, challenging part is where, where it's tough, where your body starts to really hurt, where you mentally can't continue, where you think you can't continue and you have to try and break that and, and climb over the wall as such and, and keep on going. And you will keep on going, it's just trying to find the mental aptitude to say, right, you know, I can do this and I can keep on going. I don't do DNFs, I don't do did not finish, so one leg at a time and uh, just keep it going, that's all. Yeah, we all ask ourselves why the hell we're doing this from time to time, but we still keep coming back, so there's got to be a reason. Further and faster is about, you know, we're not interested in the end, we're not interested in the summit. We're interested in what happens during it. And it's about pushing yourself to the limit. It's about you know, pushing your mind, pushing your body um, to go further and faster and always improve. And, um, but also have fun as well. I don't want to sound too <laughs> full on, but stay psyched. That's what it's about. My name's uh, Simon Jones. I'm a local GP. I work in, live and work in Kendall. Most of the things that people have come to see me about are pre-existing injuries that they kind of know about already and have just got worse, you know, after, after miles and miles of racing. They know whether it's going to stop them and they, you know, they, before they come to see me, they just need a bit of uh, validation to, you know, know this is, this is as far as you go, really, for the people who have to stop. I haven't seen anything that I would describe as serious, but there's just some people who are going to be hurting for a, for a few weeks, I think. Other people who've got more minor things, they just need a bit more, you know, a bit of encouragement, and they're happy with that, and they're uh, and they're off. It's very easy then to get into sort of a spiral of negative thoughts and and, and run yourself down. And I you need to try sort of to turn that around and get get a positive attitude again and I think that's the hardest bit. It's the next step up from a, a 50 mile. I did the um, Lakeland 50 uh, two years ago so it's just the next step to do the 100 and also to do one thing in your life you know you want to Take something off in your life to do something, something really amazing. You're on your way home if you like. It's a long way home, but you'll be there at the end, so that sort of like helps me along. It's unbelievably challenging. It's um, the distance, the, the climbing, um, the ground, more so, the ground was just horrendous. It just, it just cuts your feet a bit. Very wet, loose rocks.
I mean, I'm a competitor and have been for 20 years, but from an organiser's perspective, you sometimes forget what it means to people as well. You know, I've had people that I've met over the last couple of years doing this event and met them at the finish line and they're quite overwhelmed and they're crying when they've finished and how much it means to them and what an achievement it is. But it, it, it does mean a lot to the, the people that are doing it and you see it on their faces when they, when they cross the line. I'm physically and mentally broken, but yeah, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty good. I've completed it, so I'm, I'm delighted. Delighted. I think there's a real boom at the moment in, in, in the UK with endurance sports, whether it's swimming, running, cycling, triathlon, and certainly in trail running. And I think people are just looking for the next thing, you know, they just want to do something, whether it's a bit faster, whether it's a bit further, it's just taking that next step. And I think people are much more brave now, or barriers have been removed, that they'll have a go at these things where they wouldn't in the past because they thought, you know what, I'm not an elite athlete, I drink a little bit too much beer, I could never do 50 miles. But um, I know quite a lot of the people that do the 50 mile course and they fall pretty much into that category. <laughs>